Mass radiological chest surveys detect many cases as tuberculosis suspects. In the past, patients have been committed to sanitary and hospitals on this and x-ray finding. This is not a positive and absolute diagnosis. The detection of tubercle bacilli within the patient's sputum or body fluids is necessary before an absolute diagnosis of tuberculosis can be made. On some x-ray films, the diagnosis of tuberculosis is quite obvious. However, the recovery of the tubercle bacillus is still desirable. There are many non-pathogenic acid-fast and alcohol-fast organisms which may be mistaken for tubercle bacilli and are identical with them in microscopic appearance. Broad experience has taught that the most accurate diagnosis can be made only by cultivation of tubercle bacilli on specific culture media and animal inoculation or both. One of the most satisfactory of all diagnostic tests for tuberculosis is the cultivation of the suspected bacilli on Lowenstein's medium as it has been modified by Dr. Jensen and then Dr. Holm and as the procedure is performed at the Stoughton Serum Institute in Copenhagen and at the U.S. Public Health Service Tuberculosis Evaluation Laboratory in Atlanta, Georgia. This method of cultivation has these four advantages. For the preparation of modified Lowenstein's medium, we use monopotassium phosphate, magnesium sulfate, magnesium citrate, asparagine, glycerin, redistilled water, potato flour, eggs, and malachite green. Eggs are washed with soap and soda. These are fresh eggs obtained from chickens which have been fed green feed. After rinsing in tap water for 30 minutes, a sterile setup is prepared for the breaking of the eggs. The worker's hands are surgically clean, although not surgically sterile. Eggs are broken into a cup with a sterile wooden applicator. and are then poured into a sterile flask. Homogenization is carried out by manual rolling and shaking. Mechanical agitation may be used. The homogenized eggs are then strained through sterile gauze to eliminate all of the large particles. The volume of eggs is then measured in a graduated cylinder. The amounts of all the other ingredients used are proportional. These flasks contain the salt solution to which potato flour has been added. They are heated with continual shaking until the solution is clear. All the flasks are then placed in the steam bath. Flasks are kept at 56 degrees centigrade for one hour. Employing a sterile technique, the salt potato solution is added to the eggs. And both are mixed by shaking. A 2% malachite green is added. Malachite green inhibits growth of other organisms and imparts a green coloration to the medium which contrasts with the colonies. This is the final step in mixing the ingredients.
The medium is then placed in a dispensing flask from which it is tubed into individual test tubes. Tubes of fluid medium are all placed in this inspissator for the necessary formation of the slant by coagulation. The floor of this inspissator is so inclined that a long uniform slant is formed by the medium within each tube. It is inspissated in this form. Approximately 10 to 12 degrees will provide a suitable slant for seeding the culture. This inspissator is fairly large and it can handle many tubes. Each laboratory can construct this simple inspissator in a size to meet its needs. The dead air space must be eliminated to provide the same temperature to all the tubes. Wool batting serves this purpose well. After 40 minutes at 85 degrees centigrade, the inspissator is opened. batting is removed. The tubes are placed in racks in which they will be stored until needed. Prior to storage, the cotton plugs are trimmed while the hot tubes are handled with white gloves. The fluff is snipped off and the plug is depressed into the tube. The tubes are then flamed and paraffin to prevent evaporation of the medium while the tubes are in storage. Storage is maintained at cellar temperatures for a maximum of two weeks, beyond which period the medium loses sensitivity. Centrifuge tubes and slides are both numbered to correspond with the specimen numbers. A sterile black and white cardboard petri dish is used. The sputum is best studied over a contrasting black background. Contaminated stoppers are carefully discarded. The sputum is poured out onto the black dish and is dissected with a sterile wooden applicator. Working on a metal tabletop which can be sterilized by flaming, sputum is spread out and teased apart. The portions are divided. Two cc's are placed into a centrifuge tube. Several selected flecks are placed onto a microscope slide. Using another micro slide, a smear is prepared and fixed by flaming. Another technician stains the smear while the tubes are prepared for culturing. The numbered petri dish is placed into a container to be referred to later if necessary. The tube is stoppered until the next procedure is performed. Then temporary stoppers are discarded. Four percent sodium hydroxide is added to the tubes for digestion and homogenization of the stringy portion of the sputum and to reduce the number of contaminants. 5% sulfuric acid is preferred with thin body fluids. This gives good homogenization where there are no thick tenacious particles and is less injurious to the viability of the bacilli. The tops of the tubes are flamed. and a sterile rubber stopper is inserted in the inverted position. This is done to prevent the virulent specimen from getting into the space between the stopper and the wall of the tube.
violent agitation is carried out to hasten the homogenization of the specimen. A mechanical paint shaker may be used. The specimen is then placed in an incubator for 20 minutes and is shaken every five minutes. The rubber stoppers are replaced by sterile rubber caps for centrifugation. Tubes are carefully balanced. Any centrifuge may be used. This centrifuge is suspended to decrease vibration and to facilitate the cleaning of the floor space below it. Centrifugation is carried out at 3000 RPM for 15 minutes. The caps are then removed and the supernatant fluid, which may contain viable tubercle bacilli, is poured off into a splash-proof container. A sterile Pasteur pipette is prepared for the seeding of the culture. Two drops of two normal hydrochloric acid are added to the sediment for neutralization. No indicator is used because it may injure the tubercle bacilli. The diluted sediment is aspirated with the pipette and employing an undulating serpentine motion, the specimen is inoculated onto the slant as the pipette is withdrawn from the culture tube. Optimal results, the entire surface of the slant should be covered by the continuous zigzagging motion. The label is checked. Tubes are again paraffined and then placed in an incubator. After two weeks of incubation at 37 degrees centigrade, the inoculated culture tubes are examined with a hand lens because growth is usually visible at this time. They are examined weekly for a total of six weeks. Colony identification is observed by the variations of colony growth. On modified Lowenstein's medium, colony differentiation is fairly consistent. Identification is simplified. The human strains exhibit eugonic growth whereas the bovine strains are dysgonic. Note the rough, luxuriant human colony as compared with the other colonies. Bovine colonies do not show luxuriant growth. They are smooth, pyramidal, and smaller than the other two. Avian colonies are smooth and hemispherical. Their color is faintly yellow. One cc of the homogenized specimen is injected subcutaneously into the thigh of the young guinea pig. After six weeks, the animal is sacrificed for the autopsy. This is performed with sterile instruments. The abdomen is prepared with alcohol. A careful dissection is performed. A thorough examination is made of the lymph nodes, inguinal, lumbar, hepatic, and tracheobronchial. Liver, spleen, and lungs are carefully examined for evidence of gross tuberculous pathology. 
Smears are made from all macroscopic lesions. Since laboratory guinea pigs have a tendency to become lost, caution must be exercised to identify guinea pigs at all times. More economical than routine guinea pig inoculation and more reliable than the scanning of sputum smears microscopically for bacilli, which may not even be tubercle bacilli, is pre-culture of a specimen on a reliable culture medium. Modified Lowenstein's medium has shown great promise. Its preparation is not difficult or expensive. The ingredients are simple. Fresh eggs are most important. They are broken under surgically clean conditions. Mixed with the salts, glycerin, and potato flour water. The liquid medium is measured into tubes. It is inspissated at 85 degrees centigrade for 40 minutes and inoculated with a carefully prepared specimen so that with incubation the viable tubercle bacilli present may grow into grossly identifiable colonies. Those laboratories which do not as yet employ cultural diagnostic tests and laboratories which are dissatisfied with the results of their present techniques may consider the use of modified Lowenstein's medium or tuberculosis diagnosis. Radiological diagnosis serves only as a rough classification of cases. This is not good enough. We must recover the tubercle bacillus. The harshness of the therapy demands the isolation of the organism. Of paramount importance is the recovery of the tubercle bacillus from the sputum or body fluids of all suspected cases. For a bacterial disease, the soundest diagnostic procedure is a bacteriological diagnosis. 